If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, binding up the brokenhearted, setting at liberty them that were bound, restoring sight to the blind, causing the lame to walk and the deaf to hear, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, and preaching the gospel to the poor. To all classes alike was addressed the gracious call, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The besieged, despairing of successful resistance, were on the point of surrender when the Roman general withdrew his forces without the least apparent reason. The promised sign had been given to the waiting Christians, and now an opportunity was afforded for all who would obey the Savior's warning. Events were so overruled that neither Jews nor Romans should hinder the flight of the Christians. Without delay they fled to a place of safety. Terrible were the calamities that fell upon Jerusalem when the siege was resumed by Titus. Thousands perished from famine and pestilence. Natural affections seemed to have been destroyed. Husbands robbed their wives, and wives their husbands. But in that day, as in the time of Jerusalem's destruction, God's people will be delivered, every one that shall be found written among the living. Christ has declared that he will come the second time to gather his faithful ones to himself. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory.